Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we love you and we praise you in the name of Jesus. You're so good. Your mercy is so good. It's everlasting. Father, we love you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here today. Have your way, Holy Spirit. In this building, online, move into the hearts of people even right now. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that every person that's being challenged, that every person that's dealing with some type of addiction or dealing with a problem, I pray that today, Holy Spirit, it's, it's broken in Jesus' name. And that you empower them to walk this life with boldness and without fear. Hallelujah, Father, we love you. In the name of Jesus, everybody agree with that? Said amen, amen, amen. Well, welcome to church. Hallelujah. We're glad you guys are here. Uh, this will probably be a message you'll never forget. Hallelujah. I like that. Okay. We're going to talk about some things that churches don't really talk about a lot. But before we do, guys, I want you guys to be encouraged that though you're in the world, you're not of the world. Y'all know that, right? I know we read that and we shake our head and go, wow, that's cool. That's, good. that's cool. I like that. That's all right. You know, no, you're in this world, but you're not of this world. That means when the world says uh, we got a gas shortage, what do you do? You say, okay, that's cool, but I'm not of this world. So this world is not going to put gas in my tank or get me somewhere I need to go to get gas. I got the great Holy Spirit that's going to get me where I need to go. And I don't just preach that. I live that, okay? As soon as the news came out and I sent out a text to the church not to be in fear. So if I, you ever get a text in church and it's about something that's happening in the earth, just know this, I'm not doing it in fear, okay? I'm just letting you know, hey, we're getting ready to use some of our faith, amen? We're going to use our faith toward Jesus, glory to God. Well, as soon as it all broke out, I just said, Holy Spirit, because I got a big truck. I don't know about you guys, y'all may have little cars, but I got a big truck. And that big truck's got a big hole that likes to suck in a lot of gas, okay? So, again, you start riding to work and you look around, you do see all the, you know, gas stations that are empty. You see the signs that are blank. And, again, fear can grip your heart. Like you need to be like some people that go and get a garbage bag and they put gas in the garbage bag and tie it up and put it in the trunk. I don't understand what that lady was thinking when she did that, okay? I mean, she double bagged it too, buddy. I'm going to tell you that right now. Would have loved to see the outcome of that. It probably wasn't good. But this is what you do. And that's why I love this, what we're talking about is the Holy Spirit because he's my best friend and I want him to become your best friend. He's the one that's guiding us through life. You do know that, right? When you got saved, you changed tour guides. You know, before Jesus and before Holy Spirit, you had the tour guides of news, media, friends, family, unsaved ones, whatever. They basically kind of told us what to do, what not to do, and we just did it. Well, when you got saved, you changed all that. You gave all that in. Now you have one director of your life. His name's Holy Spirit. So that means I don't have to be concerned about getting gas. That's good news. Amen. I said, Holy Spirit, I'm just going to ask you right now in advance to just uh, lead me to the gas station when it's time to get gas. Thank you. Amen. And going about my life. I ain't fearing. I'm not staying home. I'm not going to wrap myself up in no room. Scared. Save my car. Go out and pray over the gas tank. No, 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 no. I have faith that he's going to bring me where I need to go. So I waited till I was on my way home where, you know, everybody would be getting gas. You know what I'm saying? Or either early in the morning. I don't, I don't do it then, okay? So I'm going home, and I just pull over to the QT right beside the interstate. Not the, you know, gas station in the backwoods somewhere. To where you know there's probably a shot. I got some gas. No, no, we're going to go right to the gas station, okay? Because I'm going to see Holy Spirit do what he does. I pull up to the gas pump, get out, fill up my truck, cut it, go get a cup of coffee, decaf I might add, okay? And uh, I ease my way back out and get my truck and go home. No lines, no fighting, no fussing, no cussing. And that's what I want you guys to do. Just because the news says that we have a gas shortage, that is just a, a sign to all those that don't believe. Because we trust in God. And if Elijah could be fed by birds, ravens could bring the man of God some food. Do you think God can get us some gas for our car? Yes. Yes, he can. Don't live in fear of nothing. Because you're in the world, you're not of the world. You understand? We don't talk like the world. We don't prepare like the world. We don't live like the world. No, we're not of this world, man. You know what I'm saying? God's not waiting until we get to heaven to take care of me. You know what I'm saying? He's going to take care of me right here. And what a better way to show his glory is when everybody else is trembling, standing. I ain't getting in no line for gas for two hours. Are you kidding me? I got other things to do in my life. Amen? And that's what people do that are gripped by fear. Amen? 
And I'm telling you, man, COVID-19 is gone. Now, you just go ahead and mark it down. It is officially over, okay? When the CDC stands up and says, hey, look, we're just going to go ahead and let y'all know that we're, we're just removing all mask mandates and, and all social distancing to only those that are vaccinated. Well, how do they know who's vaccinated and who ain't? Brother, just go ahead and tell me it's over. It's over. It's gone, okay? Because there ain't nobody checking you when you get to no door. Not in this country yet. I'm not saying it ain't coming, okay? But COVID's gone. Don't let the fear of gas get your heart, amen? Fear not, Christians. There's more coming. There's more coming. You need to let this be something that you get your heart right and know that, hey, look, we're not moved by this world, amen? It don't dictate what I do and what I don't do, and it don't need to dictate what you do and what you don't do. We don't talk like the world, we don't live like the world, and we don't act like the world. Maggie, give me an amen back here, girl. Hallelujah. This Maggie, amen. Well, you know, we got two Maggies in the house. Hallelujah. Hey, Maggie, oh, my gosh. She loves me now, y'all. Finally got some love. I finally got some love. Hallelujah. But I'm going to tell you something. You're in the right place at the right time today, man. I'm telling you, God's got a word for all you guys, and I'm going to promise you, if you'll lean into this, okay, unlike probably a lot of people that don't, I believe you're going to be blessed. Amen? Well, many of y'all know we've had a text scripture in Ephesians 5, 18 and 19, and if you don't get nothing out of this series, you're going to remember this Ephesians 5, 18, 19, okay? I want you to get something inside of you, but... But Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus, and uh, he said this. He said, don't be drunk with wine. We'd probably say don't be drunk with alcohol, okay? But he said, don't be drunk with wine because that will what? Ruin your life. He said, instead of that, okay, now, now we're not saying that you can't get drunk. You notice Paul didn't say you couldn't get drunk. He just said, don't be drunk with wine. You notice Paul didn't say don't get drunk. Uh-uh. No. And see, that's good news for somebody that you know, likes to drink a lot. Yeah. Because you're thinking you're having to trade something in, you're having to quit something. No, dog. You ain't got to quit. You just got to quit who you're getting your booze from. Amen? No, no, no. We can still get drunk. He's just telling us don't get drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. And everybody in this room, okay, whether you drink or whether you don't, you know, if you was to be honest, there ain't nothing alcohol does to enhance your life and make it better. It ain't. Now, you can, you can explain it away, and you can talk about it. Drugs ain't making your life better. None of that stuff's making you better. I can tell you that right now. If anything, it's going to cost you a lot of money. Just the fact of buying it, it ain't cheap. Amen? I mean, cigarettes. Have y'all seen cigarettes? My God, man, <laughs> I couldn't afford to smoke. I mean, Seriously. I mean, man, I don't even see how you go and you pay $5 for a pack of cigarettes, man. I'm thinking, geez, man. I mean, really? And that's probably cheap. I'm just saying, really, guys, I'm telling you, these things will not make your life better. They're meant to destroy your life. Amen? But Paul said, instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and making music to the Lord in your hearts. You know all those drunk people be trying to sing sometimes? Yeah. That's all biblical. They just got the wrong stuff, amen? I mean, come on, man. I mean, you get somebody drunk, and, and they be singing and dancing. I mean, they ain't, can't dance. They can't sing. They can't do none of that, man. It's just crazy. That's God telling us, okay, we can partake of the same wine, amen? We can do this. We can get drunk in God. And I don't mean that to be, you know, kind of careless, and I'm not trying to compare it to the world. But, you know, man, this life is, is tough. And sometimes it's hard to do it sober. Come on, man. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I mean, if y'all think it's not hard, then why is drugs and alcohol so popular? Come on, man. Most of the time that people start doing that, they're trying to escape something or experience something that they're not experiencing right now. You know it. I mean, I can only speak for myself, man, but I, when I started drinking, man, I, I listen, I didn't want to see. That was my motto. I want to drink. I don't want to see. I don't want to see no more. I just want to be blitzed out of my mind. That's just me. Now, you might have been different, okay? And don't be looking all holy in here like you don't know what I'm talking about, man, okay? I'm talking about alcohol, okay? I mean, come on. I mean, this is where we live in this world. It's all over the place, man. If you watch a 30-minute a, a sitcom, you're going to see something about alcohol or something, okay? But Paul is telling us, don't, don't lean to that. I got something better for you. And that's what I'm going to be introducing to you today in a more in-depth way as we begin to talk about something that I believe is going to help you guys. Amen? 
Life can be challenging, and being filled with the right things can make all the difference in whether you overcome bad things or get run over by them. See, friend, I'm just telling you, a lot of people got ran over by COVID-19. The fear of it. They did. I'm just going to be real with you. Now, some have re- re- they've rebounded, and, they, and they've kind of got their fire back and passion back. But listen, the things of this world should not shake us. Now, I, I, I'm not saying that you should be on Facebook or social media mocking it, making fun of it, making it like it ain't no big deal. Now, I ain't talking about that. That's crazy. That ain't God. Amen? But I am talking about you taking your rightful place as a child of God and knowing that whatever that is, it ain't going to dictate your life. Amen? That this Bible dictates your life. And we're told over and over, fear not. So anything that's got fear attached to it, we know we're not supposed to lay hold of that. Okay, now we can see it and hear it, but just know, okay, that's going on in the world. All right, well, we know how to pray because we're going to pray for them because they don't have faith. They need the church standing in the gap for them because they're struggling. They're looking to the world to make their life better. They don't have a God to look to. And that's where we as the body of Christ come in to actually uphold these people, family members, friends. Don't mock them. Don't make fun of them. Don't belittle them. I mean, seriously, man, don't do that. Oh, you got the vaccine. Oh, God, go, get get away from me. Uh-uh. You know what I'm saying? Don't do that. Don't put no shame on nobody. I mean, if anybody could get some shame, it could be you and me. Come on. We don't deserve Jesus. Are you kidding me? Come on, man. We are messed up, man. We need God. We need life. Amen. And so does your friends and family. Hallelujah. Instead of reaching for things that don't help us, like alcohol and drugs, our Heavenly Father has given us something way better than anything this world could give, and that is the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to tell you something. Once you taste and see that the Lord is good, once you get a high on the most high, you can't get no higher. And I can promise you, if you can interview a lot of ex-drug addicts and alcoholics that have actually been touched by Jesus, touched by the Most High, they'll be the first to tell you, amen, brother, I can tell you that there ain't no high like the Most High. And I'm one of them, amen, brother, I'm one, I'm with you, man. I'm telling you, man, God is the real deal, amen. And I'm telling you, when you, it's just the problem is, is we just don't want to, we think that what we're doing, whether it's, you know, anxiety or depression and we're entertaining these things and we're staying close to these things we think that there's other things that's going to help us there's not there's no medication there's i'm telling you man all these things put a band-aid over the problem let holy spirit come in and recreate that which has been broken amen he can fix what the devil damaged amen i am preaching way better than you saying amen come on now y'all get excited up in here hallelujah I ain't even got started, and I'm about ready to run around the house. Man, we serve El Shaddai, man. Ain't nothing we can't go through. Nothing. This world ain't going to cause us to be scared. No. Get bold, man. Come on. You have the righteous one inside of you. Well, brother, I'm just an old sinner, man. You know, we're just all sinners. No, you ain't a sinner. If you're a child of God, you are never a sinner. You're, You're gone from sinning, amen. You are the righteousness of God. Oh, no, man, we all mess up. We all. Now, who said? You don't have to mess up. And if you do, we have a verse to help us. 1 John 1, 9, confess your sin and move on, amen. We are the righteousness of God. I am not a sinner. I am not a sinner anymore. I was a sinner. I am the righteousness of God. I have every right to stand before my God and just boldly say, God, I love you. You're with me. You're not against me. I'm telling you, man. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm just kind of getting y'all worked up a little bit before I actually hit y'all with a topic, okay? I'm saying? Getting y'all a little fired up. Well, okay, yeah, we're going we're gonna to speak on speaking in tongues. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah! Oh, 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 okay? <laughs> hallelujah. We bring him back Pentecost, man. Come on. Ain't nothing wrong with Pentecost. Ain't nothing wrong with the days of Pentecost. Now, I know we Pentecostals, and if you came from that background, I know we can get a little crazy sometimes, and, and that's all right. I'd rather be around a bunch of people that are trying to go after God, whether it's crazy or, or it's, it's an error or if it's a mess. I'd rather be around people that are on fire than people that are just flat dog dead and ain't got nothing going on. Amen? Give me people that tried to jump the rose, but they missed the last one and busted their head or something. I don't care. They're trying. They're going after God, man. Come on. Hallelujah. And I want to be at church when we come in here, man. We don't have no script that we're going to play. And we're just going to have, okay, this is what we're going to do. Everybody, bow your head, close your eyes, sing three songs. We're going to do a little scripture, benediction, pray for y'all going home. No! Why not come to church and it be a radical Holy Ghost party? Amen? Just let the Holy Ghost have fun. Amen? Come on. That's attractive. That's what people want to see. Glory to God. 
Hallelujah. I mean, you get halfway into a service, man. God starts moving and, oh, well, guys, <clears throat> y'all, y'all bow your heads and close your eyes. No, man. Why don't we just say, hey, look, Holy Ghost, have your way. Because, listen, there's people that are broken at 1130 that need to be fixed. There's people in here that may be broken at 1145 that need to be fixed. And at 1215, there still may be somebody that's broken and the Holy Ghost is dealing with them and, and they need to be fixed. But if we just look at the clock and go, it's time to eat, uh, what? Uh-huh. Come on. No, no, no. Not here. We're not going to do that. Are y'all with me? Are y'all against me? Hallelujah. Come on. And what if we do abuse the clock for about 50? I mean, what if we just go overboard and it's in the flesh? I mean, we just did it in the flesh. There wasn't no God. We just went about 15, 20 minutes over because we love God. Is that going to count against us? I mean, is God going to hold that against us? Hallelujah. No, he's not. Okay, well, open up your Bible. Here we go. Hallelujah. Let's go. Acts chapter 2. Now, we're going to read a few scriptures, and then I'm going to kind of talk about some things. But I got some things I really believe that the Holy Ghost really shared with me about speaking in tongues that I think a lot of people that do speak in tongues is going to be refreshing. Those of y'all that have never spoken in tongues, well, good. Today's your day. Today's your day. Amen. You don't have to tarry. You don't have to go to Jerusalem. It is for everybody, and I'm going to paint that right here to you. I'm going to let you see, okay, that you can speak in an unknown tongue. Well, Nathan, that sounds weird. Uh, if you don't know it already, we all weird. You weird. Even if you think you ain't, just ask people around you. You weird, okay? We got some weirdness going on, amen? We got some weirdness going on. But if God says do it, is it going to hurt us? I mean, we act like we're going to speak in tongues, and then all of a sudden God's going to, you know, bolt of lightning is going to come down. Check your life right now and ask yourself, is my life perfect right now, and is everything going the way I want it to go right now? Well, then guess what? If you added this to your life, then I guess it probably wouldn't make it any worse. There might be a good chance it gets way better. I mean, we'll try with other people that you go to the doctor, and the doctor will say, well, try this. And then come back and see me in two weeks. He ain't got a clue. You may be dead in two weeks. But all he's saying is try it. And man, we'll go home. We'll suck those pills down at noon, dinner, whatever. Whatever the doctor said, we'll do it. Like he's got the word on it. No, he's just practicing something on you. And I love doctors. I really do. But there's a reason why they call it practice. They practice medicine. <laughs> yeah. Some people don't live to tell about it, okay? But I'm just saying, we have something that's way better, and his name's Holy Spirit. So anyway, verse 1 of Acts chapter 2. It says, when the day of Pentecost, and next Sunday is actually the day of Pentecost. But I felt like, you know what, we'll talk about something else on the day of Pentecost. We're going to talk about this today. But on the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Do you know why? that it filled the whole house. Do you know why the Holy Spirit came in suddenly, that sound came in suddenly? Because they were all expecting something. They were in the room expecting something. They weren't participators. They weren't sitting around just going, oh, I wonder what's going to happen. we got about five more minutes. I need to go. So see, if that's the attitude you have about church, then guess what? It'll always be boring. You'll always leave with nothing. And you'll always be going, man, I just, I don't know, man, my life's so bad. No, your life could have got a lot better if you'd have just tuned in. If you'd have just tuned in to the right station, God's talking to you right now. Amen. Quit thinking about what's going on you know, next week or tomorrow or how bad your life's messed up. God is talking to each one of you right now in this room. Amen? And he's wanting to get something to you. So turn your expector on. Amen? Forget about how bad you've messed up or mistakes you've made. We've all screwed up. Amen? Forget that. Okay? Think about right now you're his son and you're his daughter and he wants to get something to you. Expect him to do something. Well, I heard somebody talk about tongues, man. They just said it wasn't. Listen, delete that right now. Okay? That's man talking. And I'm going to be honest with you. There's a lot of men and women that are talking that don't need to be talking about some things that they have never experienced. You are not qualified to talk about something you ain't doing. People are going to tell me, don't speak in tongues. Well, I'm speaking in tongues. Are you? No, I ain't never done it. Are you going to, what? That's like you telling me how to fix my car and you ain't never fixed a car. No, I ain't listening to you. You're out of your mind, man. So let's let the Bible do the talking. How about that? If God talks, we good. Amen. So let's expect. Let's get our expectors turned on. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one set upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. We're going to come back to that, but I want to just kind of read a little bit to kind of give a little bit of a picture of what went on after that. 
Verse 5, it says, And they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speaking in his own language. That means you had people like uh, Latinos, Chinese, Korean. You had people from all walks of life that were there, and they were actually, you know, didn't speak their language, and those people that were in the room didn't speak their language. But all of a sudden, they're understanding what these people are saying. Okay? This is a miracle. Only God could do this. Amen? So it goes on the list. It says, uh, they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all these who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? Parthians, Medans, Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phygera, and Pamphylia, Egypt. What about Stockbridge, McDonough, Hampton? <laughs> Egypt and all the parts of Libya adjoining Cyrene, visitors from speaking, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. So they're speaking in tongues the wonderful works of God. They was not speaking in tongues, blaspheming God and glorifying the devil. And this also brings me back to the Tower of Babel. Y'all remember the Tower of Babel when all the, the people were one and they was going to build this tower to God and he had to conf confuse them and break up the languages to where they wouldn't kill themselves, okay? Well, it reminds me of that because it's like God is showing us that all languages will be one one day. When we get to heaven, you will understand Chinese people. You will understand Japanese. We will understand, they'll understand us. There'll be one language, one language. And God is showing us that right here, that one language that we can actually speak and be in one accord is speaking in tongues. That's the one language that God can use to speak out. And you're going to see more of that as we go. It's going to become more and more clear. And it goes on to say in verse 12, So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, Whatever could this mean? Others mocking said they are full of new wine. So they had the appearance of maybe what? Being drunk, right? Was that just for the disciples? Because if it is, I'm ready to close my Bible and walk out of church right now. Amen? Because I don't know about you guys, but I like to be a little tipsy. Oh, there's a holy crowd here. Come on, man. Ain't nobody going to no restaurant spending $18 on a margarita just to sit there and say, wow, this is good. Are you kidding me? No, they want what that margarita is about to give them. Amen? Oh, yeah. I'm just going to tell you something. When I step into the presence of God, I want to be able to come out like them. And if it looks like I'm drunk, so be it. But while I'm tipsy and I'm bouncing around, God is working things out in my life. He's fixing things while I'm intoxicated with his love and with his presence. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. I mean, the devil didn't create, uh, you know, being a, a buzz. That buzz didn't come from the devil. Uh-uh. That buzz came from my father. Hallelujah. He knew we needed it every now and then. Glory to God. Now, verse 14, it says, But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. For these are not drunk as you suppose. They drunk. <laughs> you notice he said, he didn't say they ain't drunk. He said they ain't drunk the way you think they drunk. They drunk. So if all you in here thought you had to trade in being drunk to be a Christian, guess what? Good news. You can drink up, brothers and sisters. Amen. You don't have to trade it in. And you may say, well, how do I drink this wine? I'm glad you're at church today. I'm going to teach you how to do it. You don't have to be taught how to drink that other stuff. <laughs> like you got to have a direction manual how to pop. Look, it's real simple. Amen. Well, if it's simple to do something that ain't going to help you, how many of you know it's simple to do something that is going to help you? It's just what you've got to do today is you've got to push past your, your brain, your mind. Because your mind's going to tell you this is stupid. That's why I'm glad he picked me to talk about it. Yeah, it's going to tell you, oh, that's stupid, man. What is he talking about? That's just dumb. Well, friend, when I get done today, I believe you'll never say that again. Okay, this is real, and it's really for everybody in this room. And if there was a graduation gift you ever wanted to give your kids before they leave, you want to give them the Holy Spirit. That's the best gift anybody could ever get because he'll keep you away from a lot of stuff. Amen. 
So he goes on to say that they're not drunk, as you suppose, since it's only the third hour of the day. This was the beginning of the church of Jesus Christ. It started with them receiving the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues and looking like a bunch of drunk people. This is how the church started. And the whole New Testament, every letter that's written to every church, every church was a speaking in tongues full of the Holy Spirit church. This was just assumed. This was just part of the DNA of the church. There was no, well, we had the Baptist section, the Presbyterian section. No, this was the church of the Holy Spirit, church of Jesus. Get filled with God, receive Jesus, and then get filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. It's an evident that you got filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? So, I mean, it's, it's, it's just all through it. So, there's just times when you read in the, in, in, in the New Testament and you read Spirit, being filled with the Spirit, or whatever. it may not say they spoke with tongues, but I can tell you, based on how it started, you know that's how it, it, it was flowing through the whole thing. So today, oh, okay, God has a drink for everyone in this room, and it is the new wine that is only found in being filled with the Holy Spirit. Remember, the devil cannot create, create anything. He only perverts that which he has seen God create. So today I want to speak with you on being filled with the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. Now, how many of y'all have heard a message on speaking in tongues? Does anybody? Raise your hand. Let me see your hand. Okay, how many of y'all have heard a message on speaking in the tongues negative? One, two, three. Okay, we've got a few. We've got a few. Okay. All right. How many of y'all have heard spoken in tongues is a positive? Is a good thing. Well, good. Hallelujah. <laughs> I like it. Amen. This is good. So I think the reason why I say it's good, I think there's some things here I'm getting ready to share that you might not have heard. Okay, that are connected with it. It's not taken away from what you've heard. But Acts 2, 1, 4, I want to just read these again, and then we're going to get into... Well, let's just, I tell you what, why don't we just start with verse 4. And it says, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, Acts 2, 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Notice that when they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they began to speak in other tongues. This was a sign that, that would follow the disciples throughout the book of Acts. When people received the Holy Spirit, it was almost like God is giving us a supernatural gift to use every day. This gift will sometimes cause you to get a little tipsy and appear to others like you may be drunk. And the reason why this don't happen in church is because we don't, we don't expect it. We don't activate it. We don't do it. Amen? So then church just becomes mundane. It becomes just a, a thing we do. But back when I got saved, I'm telling you, man, they had church. <laughs> we never knew what was going to happen. I wanted to go to church. I'm thinking, whoo, man, let's get this thing on, baby. I mean, man, we'd have half the church running and jumping and shouting, and, and then we may have half the church laying down, crying and weeping. We'd have kids being slain in the spirit in the children's department. You just never knew what was going on. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. But now church has just kind of become an event. No miracles. Nobody leaving tipsy. You know what I'm saying? I'm just telling you guys, it's time for us to get back to what started this whole thing. Amen. And again, I could be all by myself, but I'm convicted. I'm going back to this. That's what I'm doing. Amen. And you might want to join me. Maybe you want to sit on the sidelines for a little bit. But I'm telling you, I want to see Holy Spirit raise people up. I want to see people that come in addicted leave changed. I want people, when they pull up in the parking lot, the Spirit of God is so heavy that it absolutely does something to them out there. I want to see something happen. Not just three songs, a poem, a nice little you know, sermon, and then we go home. Way to go, preacher. That was a good, good message, preacher. I'm telling you, man, I do not live for that. I don't. I don't. I do not live for the praise of men. You know what I live for? I live for the glory of God to come in because, see, what I say may not ever change you, but what he says can change you. Amen? And if there's anything good come out of my mouth that changed your life, you don't need to thank me. You need to thank him. Amen? Because he loves you. Amen? I'm telling you, man, I, I don't do what I do to get a pat on the back. Amen? I'm telling you. That's, I'm free of that. Glory to God. And that's why it never bothers me whether there's one in here, one million in here. It will never bother me because what I do, I do for him. Amen? I love him. Hallelujah. He's good all the time. Glory to God. In this, speak, in this speaking in tongues for us. Uh, oh, oh, let me get excited. Amen. <laughs> this is a question, and I'm trying to preach it as a statement. Okay. Is this speaking in tongues for us or just for the apostles to get the church started and then that gift was done away with? 
You know, a lot of things we hear, and again, I didn't go to seminary, thank God. I didn't go to none of this stuff, man. I'm so glad I didn't because I feel like, man, I'd be jacked up. I probably wouldn't even know what I'm really saying sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Because half of what I hear sometimes, not half, but a lot of what I hear sometimes, it's almost like they take a truth out of the Bible and they try to explain it, but it gets worse. It don't really get clearer. I'm going, man, this is simple, man. I mean, you know, you, you lay hands on somebody and they get healed. What's hard about that? You pray for somebody to receive the Holy Spirit, they receive the Holy Spirit. I mean, this is not rocket science. But yet sometimes, you know, we, we can make it a little bit more confusing. Amen? But a lot of times you'll hear people say that, you know, uh, God used the apostles in the area of miracles and signs and wonders to get the church kind of like a jump start. But then when the last apostle died, all that kind of ceased and went away with. And I don't even understand how they can do that because there's been miracles going on since the you know, start of the church. There's miracles going on all over the world. Amen? But yet, we, we sometimes confuse the body of Christ. I feel like just come to a church, preach the Bible, and let the Holy Spirit do what he does. Amen? This Bible is real. And it, it, it may, listen, if it's a little bit confusing to you, if it's a little bit like you don't understand it, just know this. Just, you just don't understand it. Okay? He's right, and we need understanding. Amen? And that's what I'm hoping that we can bring today. But, in, uh, but yeah, this is not done away with. And, and Peter addressed it in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. He said, Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins. That's called being born again. Okay, my friends? That right there is being called born again. And you see this right here. That's a semicolon, right? Okay, so this right here is one experience. And then it goes on to and. It means that this is in conjunction with, with you being, you got to receive Jesus first. And then, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So see, salvation is one step. Receiving the Holy Spirit is another. You remember Jesus said that he didn't come. He came to baptize us with fire, the Holy Spirit. That's one thing that Jesus was trying to get to the church. And he was saying this to people that already believed in him. So it wasn't about him, you know, saying, hey, look, y'all need to believe in me. No, he's saying this to people that believe in him. No, I'm wanting to get you what's in me. But you have to be saved first. Amen. So it goes on to say, um, the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now listen to this in verse 39. For the promise is to you and to your children and to what? All who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. So it's for everybody. This gift of the Holy Spirit. And then, like I said before, early on in the series, I talked about if there was one thing that if I was the enemy, I knew I would try to get away from people that I knew was going to hurt me. It would be the Holy Spirit because that's going to empower people to be able to tread on me and defeat me. So I wouldn't want nobody to get that. So I'd want people to be, you know, taking this tongue issue and I'd want them to kind of mix it all up. Okay. But when I get, to, I'm telling you guys, if you just open your heart, I'm telling you, it's so clear that this is so impart, important in our lives. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is for everyone that has received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. This is a gift from our Heavenly Father to you and me. Being filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues opens the door to the heart of the Father and all He has for us. Speaking in tongues is a direct connection to the Most High, and when you get connected to Him, then your life will be better. Again, like I said, there's no high like the Most High. So if being filled with the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues is, is for us today, then why do so many Christians teach to not do it, speak against it, simply ignore it? Two things I want to bring out is speaking in tongues is the door to the, super, to the spiritual gifts and power of God. That means if you want to see the, the nine spiritual gifts that Paul talked about in Corinthians working in your life, this is something you need to be doing. Well, see, some people don't even care. Some people don't go see Superman fly over tall buildings and dodge bullets instead of being used by the Holy Spirit to see supernatural things happen. And if that's you, well, then just enjoy your Marvel movies, and that'll be as far as you go in life. Amen? But what if you became the superhero in the Marvel movie? Yeah. Yeah, you mean, what do you mean, Nathan? I thought Jesus was supposed to get all the credit. Oh, he's going to get all the credit, yeah. But he's got to use human beings to do it. I mean, Superman had to go into the phone booth, right? And put on something else, right? To become Superman. Spider-Man had to go in and put on his Spider-Man suit to do something. We got to put on Jesus, but we got to get empowered with the Holy Spirit. And each one of you guys have an opportunity, including myself, every day to be a superhero to somebody. To bring healing, 
to bring salvation, to bring deliverance, that is available to the world around you and me. We've been given devils and demons to cast out. We've been given an opportunity to walk this gospel out in a powerful way. But we've got to do it God's way. You can't do it in your flesh. You can't do it by your church attendance. You can't do it by just reading the Bible. You've got to have an empowerment that comes only from the Holy Spirit. The Word is good, but the Word and the Spirit are one. And they've got to work together. Amen? You need the Word, but you need the Spirit. You need the Spirit, but you've got to have the Word. They're inseparable. You need both of them. Amen? So there is no putting down one, lifting up another. No, you need them both. But it's about time that there be some Christian superheroes that show up and actually bring some spiritual relief to people. Amen? Letting them see what they can't see. Letting them feel what they need to feel. Oh, man, you know, you got coworkers, man, man, I just, you know, I've been battling depression, man, for, for months, man. I just can't get over this. Well, guess what? You got good news. You've got the deliverer on the inside. And you've been praying in the Spirit. You've been spending time with the Spirit. And guess what? Now there's doors being unlocked. And as the Spirit wills, He works through you and me to perform great signs and wonders in the lives of people. Not because of who we are, but because of who He is. But it's what you give your life to is going to determine what you're actually able to do. If you give your life to the world, well, then guess what? You'll only be helpful to the world in a worldly sense. And we got enough of those knuckleheads, okay? They don't know why. They can't help themselves. They can't get out of their own shadow, amen? They're messed up. They need somebody that can help them. Glory to God. But we need to be ready to do that. And what I'm sharing with you is ways that we can do it. Speaking in tongues is the door to to the supernatural gifts and power of God. And speaking in tongues will help you control your words. The devil does not want you to get strong in either of these areas. Jesus gives us some insight in Matthew 12, 37 when he says, For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Listen, in Proverbs says this, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat the fruit of it. Amen? I'm telling you, friend, right now. There is a fight and struggle with your words, with your tongue. The devil wants to use your tongue to bring curses and damnation on your life. God wants to use your tongue to bring blessings and victory in your life. Amen? So this whole thing about speaking in tongues, what happens is is when you're speaking in tongues, your tongue is coming under control of the Holy Spirit. Your tongue is being tamed by God. And now your tongue becomes the use of God and not the use of the enemy. But as long as we fight that, then we're going to struggle with that tongue. Because we know, James says, that tongue, <laughs> whoo, that tongue is like a wildfire, brother. That little member right there can slice and dice people. Amen? But that little tongue can also bring blessing and healing and victory to your life if you use your words right. I've said this before. How did God create the world? Words. There's a fight over your words. And we don't think much about it. We say whatever. How oh, my back's killing me. And they say that long enough till eventually that back will have some damning uh, outcome to it because you, you set your faith on those words that begin to, you know, activate things in your body that you don't want to see. Have you ever thought about that, that if somebody was to stand up and say, my feet are killing me, Emily, and then all of a sudden the feet killed that person right in front of our presence. I mean, and they're dead. Their feet killed them. And we all watch that happen and we're going, whoa. That was crazy, man. <laughs> Did you see that, baby? <laughs> Woo, I don't know about that. That was wild, you know? And we didn't think much about it. And then the next sister, you know, our brother, you know, they stand up and they just say, man, I tell you what. <laughs> Woo, man, I laughed till I almost, or I laughed till I died. Or, let's say, I died laughing. Never go with that. And then they just started laughing until they fell over dead. I mean, just barely laughing. And then all of a sudden, dead. What away? Yeah, you're laughing. Got the joy. Hallelujah. <laughs> And the next brother stands up and says, man, my back is killing me. And all of a sudden, the backbone jumped out of the back spine, man. <laughs> cut the head off right there in church. Backbone, man. Whack! The head gone. Killed him right there in church. Eventually, I think we would be people that would probably go, oh, they said their foot killed them. They said they laughed. They died laughing. That brother said, he, you know, his back was killing him. There might be something to this talking. We need to lean into this. Yeah, there's a lot to it. But see, the reason why we don't see instant, I mean, the, the, the reason that there is no instant results is the plan of the devil. He don't want you to see instant results. He wants you to speak negative over your life long enough to where eventually it's going to come to pass and you don't know how it happened. You just think it was life, it was your job, it was your kids. 
and it can be the kid. I'm just kidding. But you know, you just think it's a bunch of things. Your spouse, whatever. You think it's a lot of things because guess what? It was happening over time. But the Holy Ghost is wanting to get in you, speak through you. Because when you're speaking in the Holy Ghost, guess what? The devil don't know what you're saying. Hallelujah. I like that. Come on, man. And it's good stuff. Amen. Hallelujah. So it, death and life are in the power of tongue. So the fight is over control of your words. Now listen to this. Or another way to put it is over your tongue. God wants your tongue so that he can fill your mouth with things that will help you. The devil wants to fill your mouth with things that can hurt you. Whoever has control of your mouth has control of your life. I'm telling you, friend. I'm telling you. I mean, hear me when I say this, guys. I'm telling you, and many of y'all are sitting here thinking, you know you've been saying things you shouldn't be saying. Because it's easy to do when things ain't going right. When you're hurt and you're in pain, it's easy to begin to say, man, I am just sick. Man, this is terrible. Man, I don't know what I'm going to do to get rid of this. Man, I always get sick this time of year. I don't know. And do my God, man! I, I guess you know this stuff just follows me around. I mean, you know, I mean, you saying this stuff is killing you, man. And the devil's laughing at you. But if we'll begin to take our words and give them to God, I'm telling you, it will help. Speaking in tongues will keep your mouth clean and your tongue from speaking words that will condemn you. Speaking in tongues will also edify and build you up. Listen, what Jude says about this, and this is right before the book that we're currently in called Revelations. We're, we're in that book, okay? That's where we're at. So we've skipped over Jude. We're living in Revelations right now, okay? But he says this, But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the what? Holy Spirit. Keeping yourselves in the love of God. Looking for mercy for, of our Lord Jesus Christ until eternal life. We're praying in the Holy Spirit. So here we are, some probably 40 or 50 years later than the book of Acts, and they're still telling us to pray in the Holy Spirit. Well, what is the, uh, the writer assuming? He's assuming that everybody knows when you're praying in the Holy Spirit, it's in tongues. It's not with your understanding. We do pray with our understanding. But has anybody ever prayed with their understanding for an hour? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. You're going to be Lord God, Lord God, oh, God, Lord God, Lord God. You're going to run out of things to say. But he says, pray without ceasing. How can I pray without ceasing? I've been praying to my understanding. Are you kidding me? There's only so many times I can pray for Cindy. I only know so many people, and I could probably go through them in 15 minutes. So then what? Stop? Go home? Well, no. He says, pray without ceasing. He means be prayerful all the time. What is he saying? He said, I want you to be praying in a language. And I ain't talking about going in Walmart and Publix. And I ain't talking about that. You're crazy if you do that. I'm talking about in your private time, riding down the road, in your quiet time. You could be in the store. You could be at work, and you just, mm, just pray in the Spirit. It will change your life. And if you've never done it, at least do me the favor of trying it. Amen? But where to go? Praying in tongues, uh, staying positive and emotionally strong in a negative world can come from you just spending time every day praying in tongues. God will never give you something that will hurt you, and the devil will never give you something to get closer to God. Speaking in tongues will draw you closer to God. Speaking in tongues will also keep you more aware of the leading of the Holy Spirit. Speaking in tongues is you communicating with God personally. Now check this out in 1 Corinthians 14 too. It says, For one who speaks in an unknown tongue does not speak to people, but to who? To God. For no one understands him or catches his meaning, but by the Spirit he speaks mysteries, secret truth, and hidden things. You're praying, and you're praying right directly to God. Mysteries, hidden things. What is he do? You're praying out the perfect will of God over your life. And you're letting God download you, man. I mean, you're praying to God. Why in the world would anybody take that scripture and go that that's of the devil? You shouldn't do that. So you're telling me I should not speak in tongues and pray to God. That's what you might as well say. No, I'm telling you, my friend, when God says something, he means it. Amen. He wants us to do this because it's going to. Check this out. This is another revelation I got. Paul wrote a whole chapter in 1 Corinthians 14 about this subject. Whole chapter. 1 Corinthians 14, whole chapter. A lot of verses. Okay. The same Paul wrote the great love chapter. Has anybody ever heard of that one? What chapter is that? 
So 14 is like, like right, right next door, right? So we're okay with the love chapter. Woo! You need to get to love. You need to get to love. Well, wait a minute now. Either his word <laughs> and all of his words important or it's not. So if Paul took the time to write a whole chapter about love and giving us the definition of love, and then he spends a whole other chapter talking about tongues, it's even longer in explaining tongues, are both important. Absolutely. Man, he don't take up that much space in the Bible to waste time. If it wasn't for everybody, why is it in the Bible? Don't give me something that ain't for me where I can just ooh and ah over somebody. Amen? I ain't, that ain't me. I want to experience God. And all of God. Amen? I want everything he has. Not some, not a little. I want it all. And don't tell me that, that Paul and Peter can get something Nathan can't get. Within your respect of persons, it's over. I'm done. No, this is for me. This is for you. It's for everybody. Amen? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If love is so important that Paul would take a chapter to explain it to us, do you think that speaking in tongues is also very important for him? It'd take a longer chapter to explain it. Hallelujah. Now, before I pray, I wanted to actually give you some more examples in the book of Acts. It's all in the book of Acts, guys. You just got to just read the book of Acts. You'll see it all over the place. But I'm just going to read a few chapters, and then we're going to close it. And I'm going to give you guys an opportunity to, be re to receive the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Okay? Now, some of y'all that have been speaking in tongues or got filled, you know, 20 years ago, you need to revive the Spirit. <laughs> Get it going again. Amen? Crank that lawnmower up. Hallelujah. Acts 4.31 says it this way, and, and when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke. The, the place was shaken, my friend. That's in Acts 4.31. That's just a few years removed from the outpouring. Building, shaking, my friend. When's the last time you turned on the news and the church down the street was shaking with the power of God? Oh, that's only for them. That ain't for us. How many of you teenagers would actually tune in a little bit better if the building started shaking? Oh, yeah. Yeah, if they were half asleep and the building started shaking. And, oh, dear God, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? I'm just telling you, God is interested in keeping everybody awake. Everybody. And we need some shaking going on. Glory to God. In Acts 8, a few more years down the road, it says in verse 14, it says, When the apostles, and I'm in the Amplified, when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that the people of Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. Okay, here comes Peter and John. Would we not all agree they were in the upper room? Good, right? They were in the upper room. They got, they got filled with the Holy Ghost. Let's see what they said. They came down and prayed for them that they may receive what? The Holy Spirit. Because they already believed in Jesus. Amen? For he, he had not fallen on any of them. They had simply been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus as his possession. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them one by one, and they what? They received the whole. I'm sorry, y'all don't have a script. I'm thinking y'all know. Y'all should know. Y'all need to keep picking up the Spirit. <laughs> but they all received the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 9, verse 17 in the New King James Version. It says, And Ananias went his way and entered the house, and laying his hands on him, on, on him he said, Brother Saul, this is eventually Brother Paul, okay? He said, The Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with what? The Holy Spirit. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. Acts 10, verse 44. Now, this is the story of a man named Cornelius, him and his whole house. He was a, a Roman centurion. Uh, he was not of the Jewish uh, community, but he loved God. So he sent for Peter, and Peter came to his house and preached Jesus. They received Jesus. Now, check out what happened in, in, in verse 44. Even as Peter was saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the message. The Jewish believers who came with Peter were amazed that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles too. For they heard them speaking in other tongues and praising God. This is roughly about 10 plus years after Pentecost, the upper room experience. We're still seeing this outpouring, the speaking in tongues to Gentiles, not just Jews, amen? And if it was good for Cornelius and his family, and he welcomed it, a man that loved God, wouldn't you think it would be good for the people of Revolution Church, the families of Revolution? Yes, it's good for us, amen? 
Don't knock it, just do it. Amen? Ain't that what Nike said? Just do it. Amen? And people go spend $500 on a pair of shoes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But as we close today, I, I want to ask the question, and then I want to answer it. How do I receive the Holy Spirit? How do I receive the Holy Spirit? Now I'm about to read you some passages in Acts 19. And again, this is roughly about 20 years later, more or less, whatever, it's, it's, but it's a good time after that. And we're still seeing this outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Friend, this is very important for us. We need the power of God in the church, not good communicators. God is not looking for good communicators. You do know that, right? If that was the case, he would have never picked Moses. Moses was not a good communicator. But Moses and the whole Old Testament saw more miracles than anybody. I'm telling you, friend, God is looking for some Moseses. He's looking for some. He's looking for some. But the only way you're going to be able to do it, you're going to have to have the Holy Spirit. This ain't just about your life. Your life is way more than just your life. If you give it to God, it's his life. And he wants to use your life to touch other people. Amen? But how do I receive the Holy Spirit? And I can tell you, I don't know how other churches go about doing this, but I can tell you what, I'm not working you up. I'm not going to get an organ up here, and we're going to kick it around and throw mics all over the place, and I'm going to get y'all sweating and crying, and then we're going yeah. <laughs> to... I'm going to simply do what the Bible says do. And I believe the Holy Spirit's going to fill you. And I believe you'll speak with other tongues. Paul put it this way in Acts 19, verse 1. And he said, And it happened while Paulus was at Corinth, that Paul, having passed through, you notice they're at Corinth right here. We just read something out of Corinthians. Corinthians was a tongue-talking church. Paul had to go there right chapter 14 to get them organized because they were just... They were out of control. Again, a little wildfire is better than no fire at all. Give me some fire. And it says, and it happened while Apollos was at Corinth, that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus, and finding some disciples, he said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Again, secondary here. Not first, it's secondary. It's a gift Jesus is wanting to give you. After you receive him. And I'm in a room full of people. I believe all y'all know him. I believe everybody in this room knows him. But it's time to go a step further. Some of you guys that are filled with the Holy Spirit, I'm telling you, it's just almost like he's not even there. You don't pray in the Spirit. And we should be doing this on a regular basis. We, I say we. Let's see what Paul said after that. He says, so they said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. Everybody in this room, you've heard messages on the Holy Spirit. Everybody in this room knows the Holy Spirit. But this is one part of the Holy Spirit that gets ignored all the time. And I've listened to a bunch of series. And if they do mention it, it is so brief, they touch it and they run. Okay? They run. Because this right here makes people feel uncomfortable. But again, I'm not building Revolution Church. God is. So I don't preach to please. I preach to give you something that's going to change your life. And I know this will change your life. And he said to them, Into what then will you baptize? So they said, Into John's baptism. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. See, they only knew about baptism from John. That's all they knew. Now, they had received Jesus, but they still only knew water baptism is, is the way to go. So verse 5, it says, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. In verse 6, and when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. When Paul laid his hands on them, they spoke with tongues and they prophesied. Years ago in 1988, I gave my life to Jesus Christ in the living room of a man named David Cundiff. And after I give my life to Jesus, he asked me, he said, do you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit? I had no clue. I was like them people. I had not heard if there's such a Holy Ghost. What are you talking about? 
I said, yeah, I do. And I remember joining hands with him, just like I did when I got saved. And we simply just asked the Holy Spirit to come into my heart and fill me up. And at that, we didn't rant and rave. We didn't take the cushions off his couch and throw them around. You know what I'm saying? We didn't, we didn't do none of that. Okay? Just simply prayed, Holy Spirit, come into my heart. Fill me right now. And right here, I felt something coming up. And I just began to speak in other tongues. It wasn't scripted. I didn't rehearse it. It just came out of my belly. Now, friend, the reason why I say that is, is the Holy Spirit's not going to speak for you. You've got to open up your mouth, and you've got to let him speak through you. No need to be scared. Again, <laughs> this is not scary. This is empowering. And many of you have tried a lot up to this point, And it ain't really going as well as you'd like. What if you took a step over by faith and trusted God in this? Because it takes trust in God. I mean, many of you guys, you're going to have to take a step of faith. And you're going to have to just say, you know what? I believe the word over people. I believe his word. And if Paul laid hands on them, which we don't even know who they are. They don't even say who they are. And the Holy Spirit honored that prayer. I believe today the Holy Spirit's going to honor this prayer. Okay? Amen. So if you're in here today and you say, well, Nathan, you know what? I'm ready to take that step, and I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We're going to have some music playing in the background here. Okay? Again, not to hype anybody up. Because, again, I want it to be real and genuine. I'm not going to help you speak in tongues. I'm simply going to lay my hands on you, and I'm going to say, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I'm moving on. At that point, you're going to feel a stirring right down in here. And it's between you and God. And the reason why I want the music playing, because this is not a show. I don't want anybody to hear what y'all do. Because it's not for anybody. This is between you and God. I mean, seriously, this is not a show. We're not up here to try to say, oh, yeah, she got it. She got it. No, 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 no. no, we're not doing none of that. This is not embarrassing. It's not about that. It's between you and God. So I want you guys to ask yourself, what is the Holy Spirit saying to you right now about this? There may be some in the room that says, you know, Pastor, you know, I, I was filled with the Holy Spirit years ago, but I'm just not really, I, I haven't really been speaking in my heavenly language like I, I really know I, I would like to. Well, in the book of Acts, they got filled and filled and filled. That's what Ephesians was telling us. One translation in Ephesians 5, 18 says, be filled with the, and be filled. Be and being filled. It's, it's an over and over. You don't just get filled one time. Amen? You get filled over and over again. Just like your car. It don't just put gas in it one time and you never do it again, right? You put it in there over and over again. So if you're in here today and you say, Pastor, I want to receive the Holy Spirit, or I want to be refilled with the Holy Spirit, I want you to make your way up here. I want you to be bold, and I just want you to come up here. Again, it's between you and God. We're not going to work it up. I'm going to just have you guys stand up here, and I'm just going to go down through here, and I'm just going to pray for you guys. And when I pray, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And maybe you have been filled with the Holy Spirit, but you haven't spoke in other tongues lately. Then I want you to just go ahead and yield. I want you to be refilled. Okay? So as you're sitting out there, guys, I mean, the Holy Spirit's probably been dealing with some of y'all the whole service. He's trying to get something to you. Don't resist the Holy Spirit. 